for coming to our webinar on the causes and effects of inflation in agriculture. Actually, what a time to tackle this topic. And I'm your host, Prenti Olsen, a senior global market analyst here at Tridge. We have a very diverse group joining us today. Uh, as I can see from Accra to Cairo to Lima, Toronto, London to Seoul. Wherever you are joining us from, we are very excited to have you. I must add quickly that for the most optimal viewing experience, please click on the view options menu at the top of your meeting window and enable the side-by-side -side mode to view both presentations and our speakers. If you need any technical help, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your window and a trade team member will assist you as soon as possible. Also during the webinar, if you have any questions that you hope to be addressed or during the Q&A session at the end, please feel free to post your questions in the chat. To briefly go over the agenda for today, our global market analyst, uh, Gabriela, a specialist in the fruit and veg market, will take inflation overview and inflation in the fruit and veg market. Then Eugene Tomaszewski, our grains analyst, will then take us through the inflation in the grains industry. After that, we'll have a panel discussion with Fridges Engagement Managers, a general building based in Turkey, an expert in the oil and oil seas market, and Anatoly Stianov, also based in Ukraine, also a grains and oil seas expert. Also joining the panel is export manager at Sugo Group in Chile, Claudio Tumba, an expert in the fruit and veg market. Now, before Gabriela takes over, permit me to introduce Trade to you. Trade is a leading global sourcing and market intelligence platform. The Intelligence and Solutions Division provides qualitative and quantitative insight on food and agriculture to provide comprehensive solutions for our clients. And some of the intelligence we provide are local insights, trade analysis, data analysis, price data, weather data, trade data, and reports to help clients in their sourcing and decision making. If you'd like to learn more about Trade's intelligence and solutions, please feel free to reach out to us via email or feel free to post questions in the chat. Hello everyone, as Prince mentioned, my name is Gabriela Cabezas and I'm a global market analyst for fruits and vegetables uh, here at Tritch. So I want to uh, start this webinar with an inflation overview. So what is inflation? The word of inflation is the merging of two words, agricultural and inflation. This, mean, this means that inflation is when food prices rise more rapidly than the price of any other goods and services in the economy. Inflation is an essential measure of the global price trends because together with the consumer price index is used to measure overall inflation. Why is this? Because it's such an important and big part of our budget every day, our food and what we consume daily. So let's dive in into what causes inflation. So the causes of inflation are many, but most importantly and most commonly, inflation is caused by increased global demand for uh, food and agricultural product imports. Lately, what has caused inflation? An increased demand in China. China has been producing less. Their local supply has decreased. So they have uh, been creating um, a lot of demand for many, many products. So that has caused inflation in the world because China is such a big uh, power in the world. Also, increased production costs due to increased input costs and in materials such as per, uh, fertilizer, pesticides, packing supply, water, electricity, among others. And that's something we've been facing globally. Also, increased freight costs are uh, a big cause for inflation due to the need of shipping and fried in order to transport our products uh, worldwide. 
lately with the COVID-19 pandemic, that was definitely a new um, cause for inflation in the past couple of years. But global production decreased due to labor shortages, increased production costs also affected uh, by COVID-19, and all of this caused increase in food, uh, food prices. Finally, and the most recent cause of inflation is the Russia-Ukraine conflict due to the high uh, Russia demand and high Russia production in many of the products. Those products, for example, like wheat, banana, are being affected globally and prices are getting uh, higher and higher because of this conflict between these two countries. So we saw our causes and now let's dive in into, yes, this causes uh, inflation, but what is the impact of inflation? Prince, uh, can we go back to the last slide, please? Thank you. Uh, so what are, is the impact of inflation? Inflation affects um, many things uh, within. Let's start with the fuel prices because food is used to manufacture alternative uh, fuels, it can cause a change in the buyer habits demands due to a substitution effect. These alternative fuels get more expensive and consumers tend to try to buy cheaper fuels. So despite the impact of inflation in this type of fuels, there is a substitution. On the other hand, when we talk about food-related inflation and food-related demand, there is no easy substitute since food is a commodity we cannot substitute in our daily life. We need to uh, put that energy into our body. So, and I'm not talking about like a substitution of like a more expensive brand of rice to a cheaper rice. I'm talking about uh, the grain itself or the wheat used to produce many um, of the products we consume daily. So that's uh, not easy to substitute, and that's why um, it's so hard to fight inflation. Also, as I mentioned earlier, inflation um, affects the overall global inflation since it's used to calculate it, along with the consumer price index. As we can notice once we go to the store, we will many times notice that our grocery bill is getting more and more expensive. And that is because us as consumers, we are absorbing inflation. Producers just raise their costs, um, goods are more expensive so they can uh, keep their business profitable. And we will absorb those costs and as consumers that that directly correlates with food security. If food is getting more expensive and um, as and families are not getting more income, food security will start to decrease. A family that was able to purchase um, the whole food basket for the, for the family is starting to not be able to purchase as many items because food is getting so expensive. So on the next slide, uh, we're going to look at how the food price index has increased. And that clearly shows how inflation has been rising. As you can see here on the curve, until um, March 2020, a uh, food price index was relatively low, kind of uh, stable-ish, not very, um, it faced fluctuations, but not as high fluctuations since March 2020, 2020, where we can see a steep rise in the food price index. So here we can see that until March 2022, the food price index increased by 37.5% uh, year on year and by 74.2% since March 2017, so in the past five years. So the food price index in January 2022 reached 157.48. Um, and while in February 2017, it was 90.41. So only by seeing this curve and hearing these numbers, we can realize 
inflation has been increasingly increasing exponentially and affecting us every day. So now let's dive in a little bit into a more specific uh, product category with fruits and vegetables. So fruits and vegetables are a big part of what we consume daily. Even if we don't see them on our plate uh, every single day, along a, a lot of the products we purchase use fruits and vegetables to be produced. So there are many, many factors that have been affected the rising costs of fruit and vegetables. The first of them has been the rising fuel prices that's influencing uh, food inflation on our everyday life. We can probably uh, sense it since we use uh, fuel to put in our cars, we go to the gas station and we're paying more and more to fill up our tank. And that's happening also with the tanks of the of the equipment used to, uh, for agriculture and also for the fried methods. So the increasing demand of gasoline is greater than the supply right now because of the uh, amount of vehicles and machinery the world is implementing in order to automatize our, our the systems and the production lines. So that's increasing the uh, the fuel price. Also, the decreased value of the dollar is influencing the price of oil, fuels, and gasoline since these products are traded in U.S. dollars. So the decreased value is making it more expensive for every other country that it's not um, that does not have a strong currency. Also, increased freight costs uh, have affected the final price. As we've heard for over a year now, there's a container shortage and the freight cost is getting more expensive because we need to ship our products. So also gasoline is used, as I mentioned, to, produ uh, to produce. They use it on the machinery and the trucks in order to fertilize the lands, etc. So the more expensive fuel gets for our producers and for our exporters, the more expensive our product will get and it will become more expensive for us as the consumers. So now we're gonna see the increasing fertilizer prices. So anyone who's in the agricultural industry, and if we read uh, the news or uh, the newspaper or see the news, we will, we probably have heard over the past year, over a year actually, that fertilizer prices are increasing. So why are these uh, fertilizer prices increasing? Mainly because of a shortage in the European Union countries because they're some of the main productors of fertilizers. Also, the increase in fertilizer cost is caused by surging energy costs, decreased supply and trade policies. Many countries are implementing taxes and other fees in order to import or export these fertilizers, meaning that our fertilizers are becoming more expensive. So also uh, high fertilizer prices exert inflationary pressure on fruits and vegetables because fertilizers are used to get a higher yield of our crop. Um, unless the crop is organic, we are using fertilizers. So and more expensive fertilizers will make the crop output more expensive for producers, therefore higher prices, higher uh, prices for us as consumers. Um, so unfortunately, fertilizer prices are not expected to stabilize anytime soon since Russia is one of the main fertilizer producers and suppliers globally. So with the Russia-Ukraine conflict going on and having no uh, clear expectation of what will happen, the, the fertilizer prices are increasing and it's expected that during this year, the use of fertilizer will drop by 3% because producers will rather take the production drop by not using fertilizers than making their products more expensive. 
So now let's dive into the global container index, as I mentioned earlier on the fuel slide. Containers and shipping is becoming more and more expensive, especially since the pandemic started. Uh, container prices and shipping prices is skyrocketed. Um, so as we can see here on the graph on week 36 in 2021, that, that means September 2021, the global container freight index reached its peak at uh, $1,000, um, about $1,000, and then it started to decrease a little bit over the past couple of months. The latest um, global container index we have published is of the first week of April that it's reaching $9,000, a little bit over $9,000. So freight costs are very volatile because they depend on many factors and they depend on a global supply chain. If the global supply chain is disrupted, then we will not have containers, price will rise. Um, also, if the influence uh, of supplies used for freight, like gasoline and labor costs increase, um, our, our cost of shipping will increase as well. COVID-19 was a big influence because of congestion of the ports. Many ports were closed. Uh, there was lack of uh, containers. So COVID was a big, big factor on why container, um, container prices increased. So how does container prices affect our, uh, our food price index? Because we need to ship our food places. We need to send this. If it becomes more expensive, the food at the final destination will be more expensive as well. Oh, we've talked a lot about a theory of how, what is affecting the food price index, but on the next slide, we'll see an example of one country. In this case, we're looking into the United States and how the United States has been affected with the rising food price, uh, food prices. And this is just an example. Most countries, uh, no, not most, every country has been affected um, by the increasing food prices. So, but I'm just putting here the United States example so we can visualize it with numbers. So over uh, the past year, the U.S. Consumer Price Index increased by 7.9% until February 2022 when it's the last published data. So that's, that is the largest price increase since July 1981. So in over 40 years, the U.S. has not seen a uh, uh, consumer price index rise um, that much. So in terms of um, food itself, in February 22, the price uh, per pound of the total fresh products, so we mean fruits, vegetables, in general, all uh, produce production increased by 10.9% year on year. So if we think about something costing a dollar, now it costs over a dollar 10. So the fresh vegetable inflation has also increased year on year by 6.2%. That it's, it's high, but it's not as high as the fruit inflation that year on year increased by 16.1%, and it's seeing its highest level yet in the US history. So that is definitely affecting uh, US consumers. And on the next slide, we will see products uh, specifically how they have increased. We can see that out of these products, the one that increased the least is the price of mixed fruits with only 8.4%. Why is this? Because on a mixed fruit uh, container, you can switch out more expensive products to cheaper products or add the quantity of cheaper products. So that's why mixed fruit container prices have not uh, climbed as much. But um, in terms of the fruit itself, we can see here on our chart that limes have increased by 57% year on year, 
be, being the price, um, the fruit price that has increased the most out of this um, example. And avocados have increased by 36.6% year on year. So just by looking at the uh, right column, we can see how much these products have increased and we can figure out uh, that many other products are increasing this much as well, not only in the US, but also worldwide. So right now I wanna uh, show you some examples worldwide. On the next slide, we can see um, how the market of avocado has increased in two countries. I'm just giving you guys examples of the different uh, different regions in the world and countries in different regions, just so we can see how it's being affected. Uh, first, we have Peruvian avocado that shows a 66.6 year on year price increase. In Peru, the price increase is attributed to higher demand, especially from the US and high production and freight costs. Why demand from the U.S. increased? Because the U.S. placed an avocado import ban on Mexico. So with this import ban uh, in Mexico, U.S. suppliers were looking for more um, avocado in other countries. In this case, we can see here in Peru. So also we can see the United States on the right that has increased year on year the price of their avocados by 80.96%. As I just mentioned, mainly because of this avocado ban from Mexico, Mexico being the number one avocado supplier for the US, it led to a shortage. So the supply they had in the country skyrocketed on their prices. So we can see here in February, there's a steeper price. In February 22, there's a steeper price increase. So next, um, I want to look into the into apples. Apples is a fruit that we consume. Um, it's a very common fruit worldwide. There's a lot of consumption of apples. So let's look into the U.S. Uh, price of apple. There has been a 42.86% price increase, and this occurred due to a production decrease of 10% uh, locally year on year due to the wildfires and excessive winds. So the crops were damaged, production decreased in the US, so apples became more expensive and the US started to import more apples to cover their demand. So on the right uh, side graph, we can see apples in Bangladesh that have increased by 28.98% uh, due to high domestic consumption and low local supply. Um, the supply decrease in Bangladesh and the increase in consumption has prevented producers to export their products because they needed to supply their local demands and they're getting good prices in the local market because apples have um, increased in price so much. So now let's look into cucumbers. Let's, let's dive into a vegetable now. So Mexican cucumber prices increased by 32.76% year on year due to abnormal weather, improved demand from the US and high energy costs. So as we're listening over and over again in this example, um, many factors that keep repeating themselves are increased production costs, increased freight costs, weather, and, and changes in demand. Unfortunately, uh, all these factors affect the price of our food. And on the right-hand side, we can see Russia cucumber prices increasing dramatically by over 200 percent year on year due to decreased production locally and internationally so prices are increasing um like crazy and now that um the conflict between russia and ukraine erupted prices will increase even more on these countries so finally, I want to uh, take a look into potato prices. Potato prices in the U.S. have increased by 47.6% year on year, especially due to low production and high demand. It's the same case as apples. Production decreased locally. They need to import more to cover their demand and prices rise. In terms of uh, the right side graph, we have a Spain. So Spain has also faced an increase in the potato prices, but a, a smaller increase, only 18.16%, which is also a significant increase. 
Um, so the price increase in potatoes in Spain is due to cold weather that has led into a drop production. And when we talk about weather in these examples, we need to think that if weather affected the potato crops in Spain, most probably it affected many other crops like carrots, apples, whatever crop, whenever weather is involved, most crops will be affected as well. So those are just a couple of examples of how um, inflation has affected the fruit and vegetable industry. Now I want, want to pass it over to my colleague Eugene so he can look in, uh, look with you and dive into the inflation in the grain industry and see how it has affected a different industry. Thank you, Gabriela, for for your uh, tremendous presentation and for for the insightful information that's going on with our fruits and vegetables. Let's uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Yevhen. You can call me also Eugene, and uh, I'll be talking today about uh, egg inflation, the grains and oilseed industry. So let's begin with the grain industry, and we can see a bright example on the prices with the price features with corn and uh, and wheat. As uh, as we know, both we have cost push and demand pull inflation. Sometimes they work separately, but in our case, since 2000, the beginning of 2022, both cost push and demand pull inflation, grain inflation have worked together. They have overlapped, and uh, they have created uh, such a tremendous price increase for all all grains, including uh, wheat, barley, and corn. As you can see, uh, the demand pull inflation has been working. Uh, for a price increase over the past two years, you can see it's represented by the red line on the bottom of the chart, and the small uh, small arrows that are pointing and price peaks, and they represent co uh, cost push crane inflation. Those those are the points when we experience shortage of uh, crane because of either weather anomalies, because of drought or rain, or because of cost increases. And together with the overlap of those two factors, including the Ukrainian and uh, uh, Russia conflict. Both these factors have uh, made prices skyrocket for for grain, and uh, now we can see more uh, more how the demand pool inflation uh, works on the next slide. As we can see, and I have mentioned before, uh, grain consumption has been increasing over the past ten years. We can brightly uh, hear in this uh, image, uh, wheat consumption has increased by thirty percent over the past ten years, or over the past. The two years, the increase was uh, six percent. Uh, not only because of per capita, per capita consumption, but also simply because the population in all the countries uh, is increasing, is rising, and this process is inevitable. And uh, the worst we can see with the global corn consumption. So global corn consumption has been increasing and outpacing the supply part. Uh, as we can see in 2022, uh, it is projected at 1.2 billion metric tons. It is 40% more than in 2012. And over the past two years, we have also seen a 5.5% increase of corn consumption because uh, mostly because China has been ramping up on buying more corn to satisfy its uh, animal production sector. And uh, here we can see the result that the demand has been outpaced outpaced in the supply here we can see cost push grain inflation we have already seen the demand pool with uh, my, my colleague gabriella has just been talking about uh, fertilizer prices an example how they have increased because of lack of supply from belarus and from russia and um, because of the crisis and here we will pay attention also to uh, to freight rate, we have mentioned about containers, but we haven't talked about uh, about bulk things about crane. Here, the situation is pretty much the same. With the price index uh, freight of, of freight have increased to two hundred fifty percent in March at the end of March, compared to one hundred fifty at the beginning of of January. There was a, a light of hope uh, in February when the index started to decrease, but unfortunately. Uh, we can see that uh, when Black Sea supply disruption has made global grain consumers switch to other countries, in particular to North America and to South America, and therefore freight rates, especially for rates from Brazil to China, have skyrocketed, have increased. And we can see it on the other slide. 
North America, South America, you, you can see how uh, Panamax uh, Panamax freight rates uh, have been have been increasing. This particularly applies for Argentina, for North America, for United States, and for Brazil. As you can see, for Brazil, the the freight rate has jumped from forty five dollars in at the beginning of February up to up to sixty five, and right now it's seventy dollars per metric ton. It's really a tremendous increase because of high demand from China, and uh, and China was buying corn, and uh, there was disruptions from Ukraine. Ukraine couldn't supply, so China had to switch to South America, and this has boosted freight trades increase. And another factor we can see that uh, gasoline prices and fuel prices have been increasing, as you can see, they are correlating together with the increase of uh, freight trades, and they are adding up our logistics costs. We can we can go to the next slide, please. Here, yeah, how the um, <clears throat> uh, cost uh, cost inflation has been working. As uh, we can see, the shortage of grain uh, is inevitable right now because of uh, because of the Black Sea region conflict in the wheat area. This shortage is estimated, but reached but around five million metric tons, mostly because of the. Uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, any possibility to export cranes, uh, export wheat from from its ports because the Black Sea ports have been blocked at the moment. Uh, partially, Australia and India can can boost their exports. India has increased its export to eight million tons compared to two million tons uh, last year. And Australia uh, has also got a bumper crop, but it doesn't cover all the shortage that has been caused by Russia Ukraine crisis. The worst thing is with corn, where the shortage is estimated by Trijet, eight million tons. Mostly here because because of Ukraine. Ukraine has got in stocks more than around thirteen million metric tons, and it's impossible to move all this mess immediately. And uh, of course, it creates a shortage of eight million tons. Brazil and Argentina on the other side can slightly ease the situation because uh, Brazil is expecting. Uh, bumper crop unless the weather conditions do not do not interrupt and uh, change the situation. With barley, the situation is slightly different, but uh, high demand from from Saudi Arabia uh, is causing prices to increase. Although we have a surplus of uh, 0.3 million tons, and uh, we can we can go to the next slide, please. We can see in action uh, how the uh, consumers of Ukrainian and Russian wheat have been affected in 2022 uh, by trade calculations. We can see that uh, some countries, uh, mostly Egypt, Turkey, and other countries, especially African countries, uh, Sudan, uh, Kenya, and Tanzania, uh, may be affected by uh, lack of supplies from uh, from Ukraine and Russia. And uh, we can see that most of the supplies have been going to 40 African countries and to South Asian countries. And on the left, you can see uh, possible losses, which which can be caused by the repercussions of the uh, Black Sea conflict. Uh, here we can see how uh, grain disruption have affected prices. One of the examples is with prices in Bangladesh. Bangladesh relies on Import on wheat imports eighty percent of its uh, um, global of its com consumption relies on imports from from all over the world and uh, especially from Russia and from Ukraine and we can see uh, the prices have uh, increased by thirty five percent over the year in Bangladesh and because Bangladesh has also experienced a decrease in local production which was one point two million metric tons compared to one point five. Uh, and another example is uh, is Turkey. Uh, it's been also affected with wheat and corn. Here is a particular example of corn. What has what has happened in Turkey uh, is the weak Turkish lira uh, has caused uh, imported uh, inputs to add into price, of course, and it has caused inflation and the development of this inflation. And another another factor that is causing uh, price uh, increases uh, that Turkey might not get another 500,000 tons of uh, of corn because of uh, Black Sea region crisis. So prices have increased by 29% accordingly. And the same can be seen in African countries like Sudan, as we can see on the, on the other slide. 
So we can see how uh, inflation and uh, in particular the geopolitical crisis in the Black Sea is affecting uh, developing countries, in particular in Africa. Uh, Sudan is strongly reliable on uh, Ukrainian and Russian wheat, uh, wheat exports and both countries supply around 85% of its total consumption. And with uh, current di disruptions, we, we can see what may happen and with what has happened to its wheat prices when they have skyrocketed and they have increased more than twice, reaching $1.2 per one kilo. So consequently, we, as we can see that uh, this inflation, grain inflation, is affecting more developing countries rather than developed countries. Of course, developed countries can, uh, because of high income, they can afford more. And according to the Engels law, the, the income will be able to overset uh, the losses on the on buying on buying food. But in terms of developing countries, it cannot happen like this because most of their incomes are spent on buying food. The same can be seen actually in the oil seed market. Now we, can, we are going to talk about uh, about oil seed uh, uh, prices and how inflation has changed it. If we can proceed to the next slide. In the oil seed market, the situation is uh, pretty much the same. In the oil seed market, prices have increased by more than 60%. And why this has happened, especially for vegetable oils, why this has, this has happened because Again, Ukraine, which accounts for 50% of uh, sunflower seed oil exports, cannot just extra export the rest of its uh, uh, of its potential. Ukraine was supposed to export more than 6 million metric tons of uh, sunflower oil, and then half of this potential is endangered, and it can be only exported via uh, via railway, and it's only 5% of potential what can be done via via seaports. Uh, there is a shortage of, uh, of four right now. It's related at 5 million metric tons on the oil oil market. And it's not so easy to replace it, uh, especially in the short run. As, as we can see that uh, uh, soy oil exports, as I mentioned, only 12 million metric tons. Rapeseed oil uh, exports were completely in a shortage because of uh, lack of production in in Canada. And we can proceed to the very next next slide where we can see the prices for for all vegetable oils. What is going on here? Of course, uh, not a surprise that uh, because of the shortage, uh, sunflower uh, seed oil has increased uh, most dramatically compared to um, one thousand dollars per metric ton. Right now, it's uh, more than double, two point two two thousand two hundred metric uh, dollars per metric ton. Which is a which is a tremendous increase. Uh, the other oil have co of course have increased as well, and uh, we can also see the substitution effect here. Since uh, some flower oil uh, disruption has caused the demand for olive oil and for also matter to search in the European Union, and uh, what the consequences as we can see what happened. Turkey has limited some flower oil exports by. Mm, by using only special decree. Argentina has postponed the registration for soybean oil to have enough uh, supplies in its own country. And uh, of course, Russia has also introduced some flower oil quotas of 1.5 million metric tons, which will also limit the whole export of uh, sunflower oil and causing the shortage on the on the grain on the on the oil market. So from the grain and oil seeds uh, uh, it is, that is it. So that is over, and we can we can proceed. I think to the to the next section. Yeah, so for the final discussion, as we said, um, we're going to be having um, our engagement managers, um, Senior and Toya. Um, who are also engagement managers in Turkey and in Ukraine. And we also have Claudio joining us from Chile. Um, he's also, he's an expert in the fruit industry, um, especially for tomatoes, tomato paste. And if you go on to the first question, um, it will be what question, um, what challenges has the agriculture industry faced due to inflation and what efforts have been made to remedy the situation? Um, Claudio, it would be great if you could answer for um, regarding your industry for your market. Well, first, thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to be here. 
uh, the market information that Trich, Trich brings is really valuable and I will complement it of, from my point of, point of view. Well, as an exporter of agricultural products, I could say that the first challenge that was faced was to manage how this increased cost will be distributed or in which percentage will be transferred to the final consumers. Do the contracts in a lot of cases are made with an horizon of one year was difficult to directly modify the prices of the products that we were exporting. Therefore, it was logical to see the effects in the pockets of the people stronger these years as contracts could be modified through the time. Were the producers the ones absorbing this cost the last months and making the incoterm of the operation highly important as transport costs were uncertain? Um, farmers and producers had to deal increments in their credit lines with banks due to the bigger investments they had to make as inputs got more expensive. In other words, the farmer business is now riskier than before. And for this reason, we're observing how farmers change to other kinds of, crop, of, crop, of crops. For example, in Brazil, soybean is replacing corn as a crop that requires less fertilizers. Or corn in Chile is replacing tomato as corn can resist better the effects of summer rains due caused by climate change. And, and this is really the reason why tomato products could increase an 80% for uh, this year. For, because our team, the, the, the main challenge for my team was to convince the uh, farmers to stay in tomato. And you convince them through paying more for the raw materials. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much. Um, Tulia, oh, did you have anything to add? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, as, as we know, the main causes of exploration are the war in grain, the struggles of the supply chain, cost of transport, materials, and climate change. We cannot forget that uh, about uh, fertilizers, so it makes sense to seek for alternatives for Russian fertilizers. For example, the option to use new lands in Brazil for the extraction of fertilizers components or the creation of agreements in the United States uh, to eliminate tariffs for importing fertilizers from new markets like Morocco or Trinidad and Tobago. In line with this, we also see efforts to, um, to search for cheaper alternatives for gas in order to decrease the cost of manufactured fertilizers like ammonium nitrate. The World Trade Organization made a statement requiring to the governments to help poor countries and to keep the commerce open without bans to the exports of fertilizers or any kind of foods in order to avoid damages to countries in development that depends on the use of, of this for their crops yields and depends their nutrition on other imported foods. Uh, other efforts also can be political, like in the US, President Biden is trying to reduce gas prices, releasing barrels of the nation's strategic reserve, or can be technical, like in Chile, we are implementing implement, the implementation of new irrigation systems that are the most efficient water and nutrient delivery system for growing crops in order to fight the water shortage caused by drought and climate change. Um, I also want to mention that the central banks here in Latin America were the first ones in applying, applying increases to the interest rates, a measure that has some cost, but we will wait, we, we will have to wait a few months to see the results. Um, that's basically. Yeah, thank you so much, Claudia. Uh, for Tolia, uh, can we maybe get some insight for the greens industry, especially in Ukraine? Yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for inviting me for this nice webinar. It was, uh, I think, for everyone who take place here, it's really, it will be very useful. So, uh, become, moving back to the Ukraine, uh, actually, inflation is very uh, have, have very um, high impact for Ukrainian producers. A lot of them uh, feel uh, grow demand on the world market and uh, growing prices for food. So uh, they uh, registering growing um, prices for food. So uh, they focused on the main uh, main uh, products, uh, which uh, use the most, uh, the, highest, the highest level of demand. Uh, also, I think um, 
the world hunger uh, will have a uh, grow, growth trend uh, um, because uh, this war between between Ukraine and uh, Russia, um, I, nobody don't know when it stopped. So uh, we can uh, face with a <clears throat> low availability of the grains and oil sea, uh, and oil market uh in, in the all over the world especially in the sunflower or oil so uh and um, i think we have uh, we, we are we are standing on the uh very big market uh very very big market uh problems uh, with supplying of the uh, traditional foods uh in ukraine a lot of uh, suppliers are focused on uh, some domestic market for example, some growths, uh, they uh, change their fields uh, under traditional um, grains like uh, barley, corn uh, and uh, wheat. Uh, they, uh, they, they change it for some growths like uh, buckwheat, um, some um, yellow pea and some other, and other uh, cultures. So uh also i think uh the global um inflation will influence uh, for ukrainian producers to become uh, more efficient uh to use uh, the most the modernist uh, technologies and uh, to become um more uh, more adjustable for um uh, global demand so, so that's my opinion Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Esmir, can you also, um, I know you're an expert, uh, especially for sunflowers. Can you maybe give us um, some insight into Turkey? Yes. Um... Well, yeah, um, as for oh, now, uh, we... Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much uh, and good afternoon to all of you. Um, my name is Ejenur uh, and uh, I am engagement manager from Turkey. Uh, I want to uh, try to answer this question uh, with an um, example from Turkey uh, and discuss it in terms of sunflower oil, uh, which is the um, most demanded product recently. Um, I think uh, the way things turn out for Turkey is uh, one of the cases in point and good example for us. Uh, for sure, um, inflation is not the only reason, but um, caused so many challenges. And the most recent uh, cause for inflation is Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, and in parallel with uh, first um, and main challenge is disrupted supply chain operations. Uh, I think as we all uh, experienced. Uh, for example, um, with the outbreak of the war, uh, ships were trapped in ports and uh, the vessels um, carrying the crude sunflower oil uh, couldn't arrive to Turkish port. And due to these two countries um, are the main suppliers of sunflower oil for Turkey and the rest of the world. Uh, uncertainty and concerns uh, about food supplying have alerted the public uh, because um, Turkey imports crude oil, then refine it, then bottle it and sell it or export it. Hence, um, supplying crude oil uh, is essential for Turkey. Uh, Turkey's um, domestic consumption of sunflower oil is uh, approximately 2.6 million metric ton, but production is 1.75 um, uh, million metric ton uh, and at best. And um, there is 1 million metric ton gap, and this gap uh, is filled by import for years. Uh, although the um, country has enough planting areas and available climate conditions for planting sunflower seed, um, by the help of uh, inflation uh, and agricultural impolicies, um, other challenges came out, uh, such as decrease in production uh, due to high cost inputs, uh, especially fertilizer uh, and fuel. And uh, with the thought that there will be a lack of raw material. Uh, the market couldn't give price for export because supplies weren't coming from Black Sea uh, and the bottled sunflower oil prices on the market shelves almost doubled in a night. 
uh, and um, as a nation, as a world, we lined up to buy sunflower oil in the grocery stores. Uh, and so, uh, what efforts were made to fight? Um, the first thing was banning export operations. And uh, as I've experienced, uh, this measure generally taken by developing countries, uh, which are dependent on food imports. Uh, and not surprisingly, the second thing is uh, relaxing import requirements or reducing duties uh, to facilitate imports. Also, uh, governments promoted production, uh, agricultural production, and uh, we watch programs and news uh, about agriculture and inflation on TVs more than ever before. Uh, there is a widespread uh, media coverage to raise uh, awareness about importance of agricultural policies. And lastly, uh, authorities um, start to look for substitutes such as olive oil, palm oil, rapeseed oil, or soybean oil. Um, and I hope the crisis that we experience uh, leads to a good thing uh, and governments, governments recognize the importance of agricultural policies. Yeah, thank you so much. I think um, through this question, we received a lot of insight into various markets and various um, for various products. If we move on to the second question, it's going to be um, how will inf um, inflation or acclimation affect the industry outlook? If you could just give a brief outlook um, for the industry and the market that you're um, situated in, that would be great. Um, can we start with um, Toya again? Um, Toya this time? Oh, I think you're muted actually. Can you unmute yes? Unmute and yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I missed this. Uh, as I said before, uh, a lot of Ukrainian uh, producers, they uh, focus it on domestic market. They will focus it on domestic market and uh, they report this uh, right now. Uh, they will um, supply some not, not traditional uh, products as they grow um, before. Uh, they will focus on uh, some growths, on some vegetables, uh, but uh, production of corn uh, wheat and uh, barley uh, have to have to be decreased i think because uh is for example barley uh ukraine uh, exported barley previous year uh, around five or five million tons and human uh, and uh, domestic consumption in this uh, in our country is uh, some about uh, 1.5 uh, up to 2 million tons so this uh, mainly export culture so uh, I, if if we have uh, some problems with seaports like Odessa right, like uh, Nikolaev um, Mariupol uh, we cannot uh, export uh, as uh, much as we can so uh, if if uh, before uh, the war uh, we can export grains for 3.5 million tons per month. As for now, uh, via uh, railway and via uh, southern ports like Ismail, Rini, and so on, uh, we can export up to 200 hundreds metric tons, uh, 200,000 metric tons per month. So it's it's quite uh, poor uh, volume for Ukraine. And uh, if we uh, we face these uh, problems, we will focus it on the domestic market. Uh, also with that, I uh, try to uh, focus your information for uh, not every uh, producer will uh, proceed in production of the uh, some agrarian uh, products. Uh, not, not every one farmer will continue to work in the agriculture sector because uh, as for now, the bank, cre bank credit option is not very um, available for Ukrainian farmers. Uh, so uh, this is very uh, strong factor what holds our development uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and this, this is uh, one of the big reasons for, for us. Thank yeah, you. yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I know uh... I think we um, we're running short of time, so it would be great if we could um, maybe provide brief answers for the industry outlook, and then maybe try to cover one question that was posted um, before um, 
posted that we've received. Um, so Claudio, can you uh, please give, what do you think about the industry outlook? Well, the outlook is not good in the short term. <laughs> Prices will continue growing. The war does not seem to end soon. Several countries are dealing with droughts, floods, and other climate change related problems. And the zero COVID policy and lockdowns implemented by the Chinese government in Shanghai will seriously affect the supply chain in the, in the near future, increasing the freight tariffs and cost, cost of imported foods. Uh, yesterday, we will saw that for more than 400 vessels were waiting at the Shanghai port. That's a situation even worse than the uh, traffic, uh, traffic crisis that we saw uh, last year. Uh, inflation will play a protagonist role this year. People, for real reasons, mo are more sensitive to changes in prices of food. Uh, we have seen public manifestations in countries like uh, Argentina, Peru, and Sri Lanka. Um, and, we, and most of the countries uh, are having this, this problem. The, there is uh, maybe in all the, con in all the cities that uh, of the people here, here present, uh, we are hearing continuously about this new. So um, the, the inflation will also incentivate in imported countries, the national production of food items that are normally uh, are more efficient to buy outside. Um, other effects of inflation will be the increase of interest rates in order to reduce the level of prices in, of the market, which will lead to the fear of losing economic growth and therefore uh, uncertainty for investment. Uh, inflation will also create substitution between products. Not all the food products face the same inflation rate, so people could replace meat for, for other protein, for example could be also generate substitution between imported products and national products, as said before, will also affect the depth of the people. In Chile, we are looking with caution the amount of transactions made with credit cards in supermarkets just to pay the food of the day. Uh, finally, I think that will also require uh, bigger sanitary inspections here in Latin America, at least, because we are seeing in the market new products, low cost products, that um, are, are not correctly certified. So we also have to take caution on that. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Um, Ezenir, can you also um, give um, some insight for sunflowers and turkey? Yes, of course. Um, we can say that um, we do have a difficult year ahead and uh, we cannot expect a significant decrease in prices. Uh, for sure, uh, new foods will be in market uh, due to disrupted trade activities, uh, geographical position, production capacity, import export bans allowances will be important uh, in the future. Uh, and also, um, sh but surely uh, some seeds uh, and oils are uh, will be getting out uh, of Ukraine. Uh, I think in an uh, unconventional methods. Uh, and thus, um, this should be reduced uh, sun oil prices a little bit. Uh, and I think um, inflation's role uh, is uh, being a forced measure to take uh, strict precautions to support production uh, and protect global food security. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, it seems like prices are all increasing and there's very, um, we, um, we we don't know about um about the production level and all of these certain um uncertainties that we are facing right now um due to the time constraint um we i don't think we can reach many questions but um maybe we can try to cover one question and, and any cover um any questions that we aren't able to cover um we'll try to address um them in the follow up email because as um in the follow up email we'll be providing the webinar recording. Also, we're going to be providing the slide deck that, um, what, that we have presented also with the survey. And yes, um, as I said, like responses to some of the questions that we've received, because we received a lot of questions um, for the webinar. So yes, for the first, for the question um, that we have, um, it is going to be, um, how can we uh, maintain stability 
in the um, agriculture industry, despite the world's geopolitical causes. So um, I think this one, I think it will especially affect the grain industry. So maybe we can ask um, Tolia and maybe as um, senior, you can maybe provide a brief insight and then we can, I guess, um, yeah, conclude and, um, and yeah. <laughs> Asenir, can oh, Asenir, can you also um? As a, sorry, uh, can, can you repeat? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. Um, it was um, how can we maintain stability for? In your case, it will be for the grains industry, despite the world's geopolitical causes. Yeah, well, um, as for me, uh, any war, any conflict. Uh, even uh, between uh, some big producers uh, all over the world uh, can uh, damage all the trade uh, world world trade organization and uh, as for now as i i don't want but i'm expecting uh, the growing uh, world hunger in the world i'm expecting uh, growing prices uh, for the grains uh, especially for some fresh vegetables from for some uh, bread and some another products from the wheat, uh, corn, and another products, uh, processes from the uh, raw materials. Uh, also, I am uh, expecting a low availability of the grains on the old world market. And um, all, all of this, as I think, it's a, a very a strong uh, and push factors. Uh, to uh, look for some another uh, techn technology, another technology uh, for production, uh, for some recycling, for um, some another another uh, way for using uh, some food and raw materials for people. So I think uh, we have to. Uh, it, it's it's one of the good uh, opportunity for some trading platforms because. Uh, uh, as for now, it will be uh, growing, uh, growing, uh, uh, gr growing need for a uh, good partner who can uh, um, obligate some payments uh, settlement for some supplying uh, of the good uh, quality products and so on. So I think it's a very good uh, time for some new trading platforms as well. Yeah, oh, sorry, I didn't notice, but I think we're um, kind of over the time a lot. Um, so I think we can, we might have to wrap it up. Um, so thank you everyone for um, participating in the webinar. I think we were able to really get, um, get a lot of insight, a lot of information into various different parts like pest, um, fertilizer, the feeds, the oil seeds, all different sectors across the globe, like Turkey, Ukraine, um, the US many um latin america as well i think that was very um helpful and insightful in learning why why we we're experiencing these call um increase in prices um so regard uh, um, regarding the follow-up um as i said i think uh, we will be providing a follow-up email after within three business days it'll be having it'll be um with the re webinar recording it'll be also having the um short survey regarding the webinar um it would be great if you could provide feedback if we will also provide the slide six um and also um yeah we'll be also responding to some of the questions because we see we received a lot of questions and we weren't able to cover all of them um yeah so thank you everyone for joining and i hope you have a great rest of your day